you know, if you tell somebody, hey, I'm struggling, that's your truth. And it's truth. But if you tell somebody, I'm struggling, I'm ready to tap out, I'm ready to call it quits, that's bigger truth. And when we do that, in these crucible environments, we get bigger grace. Welcome to the Crucible Project Podcast. The Crucible Project is a nonprofit organization committed to creating a world of men and women who live with integrity, grace, and courage, helping them to fulfill their God-given purpose. This podcast will discuss important and sometimes difficult topics while delivering practical life applications with men and women who are currently practicing this work. We are igniting Christ-like change in men and women through experiences of radical honesty and grace. Yeah, the, the growth groups continuing to do professional work. Mm -hmm. um, and here you are, the journey has continued <laughs> since 2018. And uh, yeah, what else in, in the, uh, I like to say crucibledom, you know, in, in the universe of crucible have, have you done and how has that impacted you? It, it surprises me how many people think, but I remember getting home from a crucible weekend and uh, I had like three people say, well, did it fix you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, heck, if it were that easy, I wouldn't have waited 46 years to be fixed. Yeah. Um, I would have done it a long time ago. You know, so I started my crucible journey and then I got in a group and then I did all the second level weekends. So for me, I started off with the mission weekend to understand why was I on the planet with the idea of so if I am God's beloved son, if I'm a beloved son, what does it mean for me to be, to have a mission and to have a purpose? What does it mean for me as a husband and as a father to live purposefully and intentionally? So, yeah, so, so that's, that's the first step. And then, then I did um, the sexuality weekend. Um, and for me, the only other, the only person I've ever been with my whole life is my wife. And so people are like, oh yeah, you know, you weren't the right candidate for the sexuality weekend. Huh. And I was like, okay, but the sexuality weekend really is and isn't about sex. Yeah. For me, it was about that lover part of me that longed to connect yeah. and longed to see and be seen so that was the next part of my journey while still being in groups and doing that. Um, and then I went to uh, the leadership dark side weekend and I really got in touch with that part of me that I'll call it my inner critic. Mm -hmm. You know, on that weekend, I learned how my inner critic really comes online and comes at me with damaging messages and critical messages and how I, you know, will internalize that and just live from that. And, and as you know, just a husband and a father, right. There, there's leadership there, right. You're, you've got a kingdom to lead in, in that, but you're also a leader in other parts of your life. Right. And so how, yeah. How did those other parts get affected along with kind of the close relationships? So it really shifted where people now have said, you're the safest man I know. Wow. Um, and this is from the same people who couldn't have said that before yeah. and wouldn't have said that before, you know, but they'll, but let's be honest. They also say, but man, you know, there's an edge to you sometimes, dude, that I'm not sure if that's coming out at me or not. And it's something I still got to work on, you know, but then I did the last weekend, I did leadership joy and on leadership joy, I really was able to get in touch with the understanding that am I good enough wound mm -hmm. was really coming out in my life. So I, I learned and I got clarity on that weekend that I spend all my time taking care of everyone around me, that when it comes time to do for me, there often wasn't energy or time for that. And so, you know, take, take my childhood, you know, I took care of my parents. I took care of myself. Fast forward into adulthood, I take care of my wife and my daughters, but I didn't take care of myself. Uh -huh. And that pivotal point of not taking care of myself is also what got me to the weekend. Because, 
you know, the men would tell you that we're on my initial weekend, dude, you were so fragile. We were worried about you. So yeah, so I've done the second level weekends. Um, I've been in groups. I apprentice uh, lead here in Colorado. And then I'm a part of the Colorado uh, regional leadership team where we help uh, drive and steer all the activity um, that's a part of what happens in Colorado. And then for me, uh, I am a weekend staffing junkie. You know, I, I love to staff our weekends. I love to serve other men and help other men do that as well, because I would say you get as much out of staffing as you do out of your initial weekends, because yeah. Yeah. your your stuff is still online, your uh, challenges are still there, but it's done within a community of grace. Hmm. It's done within a community of trust. It's done within yeah. a community of strength. And, and so I staff. So those are all the things I do to keep, to keep my journey going. To, to keep it working that, yeah, that, and uh, yeah, I think that is much of crucible them <laughs> right there. And, uh, you know, something just came up for me. I'm, I am also a volunteer on the, the Colorado leadership team and uh, Derek, you were definitely first team, all state, all league. You, you're a rock star and it, and it really does. I lean on your gifts um, and the way that they show up to serve other men. So I don't even appreciate that. And, uh, one of the things along that that comes out was an article written by Derek Gordon that came out in our community newsletter that I'm going to translate to this stuff works. Stuff. Yeah, uh, this stuff works. Um, and yeah, as, as you talk about it and hear, you know, I, I just I hear you say, you know, little truth, little grace. Big truth, big grace. And so, yeah, I just wanted to give you a, an opportunity to speak to that with everything you've been through with, you know, being, being a men's retreat junkie anyways. Yeah. How, how does that land for you now? Grace is transformational. Grace is empowering. Grace gives strength to the broken. Grace gives hope to those who need hope. And, you know, if you tell somebody, hey, I'm struggling. That's your truth and it's truth. But if you tell somebody I'm struggling, I'm ready to tap out. I'm ready to call it quits. That's bigger truth. And when we do that in these crucible environments, we get bigger grace. And it's that's where the transformation happens. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. Big truth, big grace. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I also, uh, reading through this, my, um, my little experience doing my initial weekend and coming out and being like, Oh my gosh, I'm skeptical. And that's, that's one of my, my core tools, right? That's my hammer. Everything looks like a nail. Just be skeptical of everything. Yep. And and I come out and I'm like, wow, this did shift me. Mm -hmm. And you know, but how, how am I going to feel Wednesday? And then like weeks into it, I started a two-year group did meeting every week, coaching calls, second level weekends. And when I went back and staffed, my first initial weekend after two second level weekends, that's when I was like, Oh yeah, this is very much where I am and I'm on the other end of it now. So same thing, but I'm a, it allowed me to process. And I, I think I heard you say, you know, as good. And I would say as good or better from what I've heard from other men mm -hmm. um, to show up in staff. One of the things you get into here uh, after my two year course was this showing up and being real big truth and big grace being authentic uh and in as deep a way as i know how and i'm finding uh, that it deepens as i continue to learn about it yeah you you say when speaking truth is met with full support and acceptance we are seen heard and understood during the process often might be the opposite of what we expect of judgment and condemnation but this sets off a chemical and neurological reaction triggering our brains to produce a cocktail of neurotransmitters dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, among others, best drugs on the planet. And, and that, that came to me, I was like, all of this work and all the outside work and other therapy I've done and other groups I've been in this core part of really showing up and being known and seen and accepted and doing the same for others. 
seems to be the ongoing cocktail of drugs mm -hmm. that is like spiritual, emotional, psychological health. And I'm wondering with all the other things you've done, how, how that shifted or how you arrived at that play. That's so beautifully stated. I love that. When all those things come together, especially for us men and women, but when we're able to drop our shield, when we're able to take our masks off and we stop performing, we stop puffing up, when we stop hiding behind all of our stuff and, and who we are and and we drop that and we allow ourselves to be seen, it's powerful because the strength that we use and the energy that we use to hold up those shields, that energy then gets shifted where we in turn get to offer grace and give it away rather than fighting for our own mask. Yeah. You know, thank I, you for that. You know, I like, I like to, to say, you know, step out from behind your shield and see what happens. There's risk there. You might get shot. You might get wounded again, or in this work, you just might find healing. You just might find grace. Yeah. The, the healing and, and the grace and the risk of, of further wounding. Uh, there's really good reasons. Mm -hmm. I don't step out from behind my shield. Right. Um, and yeah, that, that environment um, of being in this crucible, being in the groups, being on the weekends, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, this, this next part does have to do with, with the environment, with the other men around us. You say, I credit the exponential sure. growth I've personally experienced in these last six years to surrounding, my, to surrounding myself with men who are willing to tell me the truth. Being around men of this caliber is terrifying. And if I'm honest, also infuriating, mainly because I can no longer get away with anything. Yeah, so I, I wonder if you could speak to that exponential growth and, and those men uh, that have been around you. And, uh, you know, if anything comes up the way you've done that for other men as well. I now do life with a group of men that um, mm -hmm. they don't let me get away with anything. So when I'm being an absolute jerk or worse, um, they're the ones that know me well enough to call me on it. They're the ones who also, um, there's a man that I mentioned in that newsletter. He mm -hmm. makes me laugh all the time. And he helps me take my, to not take myself so seriously. And he's that man who helps me to put my shield down and to put my mask down and just go, wow, that was stupid. Um, you know, and I've also got other men who in their most loving, annoying way, <laughs> tell me what a beautiful person I am. They reaffirm those ideas of you're a good dad. You're a good husband. One of them even told me a while back, he said, um, you are the example that I hope to model my life after. Mm. And I'm like, hold up. Like that's, that's a tall order, but it's because he sees I'm doing the work, but it also, and as he says, that also gives me grace because it tells me mm. I don't have to be perfect mm. to get things right. I don't have to have all my crap together to be good enough. And those men, they also, you know, they're the ones that when I'm having a rough day, I can say, hey, guys, I need some prayer. Mm -hmm. And they're right there praying. Or when there's things going on uh, with my wife or with my daughters, they're the ones saying, you're the dad your daughters need. Go chase after their hearts. You're the husband that your wife needs. Go, go chase her, go pursue her, go make her feel safe. You know, these guys, when they watch me step back from the battle, they're the ones that lock shields and push me forward into battle. They don't let me run away from the hard things in life. They don't let me run away and shrink back. If anything, they're like side by side, we're stronger together. And so that's what those men mean to the, what yeah. those men mean to yeah. me. Yeah, uh, I I love that. What a blessing to to put that in there. Um, this this is the final thing that you you say as you talk about those men. You know, without men like this in our lives, we are blind. Without feedback, we cannot truly see ourselves. 
And without this grace and constructive criticism, we helplessly stumble forward, preaching our own half-truths and believing our own bull stuff. Um, I, I love that. that. That's, yeah, su such an, an important thing to, uh, as I hear the, the speaking in uh, truth, but also I talk about grace, like to be able to laugh, right? To have some joy about it. This like uh, serious, you know, grinding at the mill, you know, to, to live life with grace and truth and to hear, hear the joy in that. Um, also, I just wanted to reflect back those words and uh, say, yeah, the, the man who wrote this is the sort of man I would want to model my own life after. And a lot of it has to do with not being perfect, not having the best words, but being willing to do the work. Um, and I see you do the work and continue to do the work. So thank you, Jay. Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about at least two more things. And I'm curious if anything has come up for you around this as we talk about this that men can hear maybe where you were if you want to radically change your life and you sat with it for some amount of time i don't know how long what what would you say to the derek back then uh, that you might be able to say to the men who are maybe on the face on the fence um and where you are now that's a good and hard question i would say to the men take a brave step and get your butt on a weekend stop talking about authenticity, go learn what that really looks like. If you're tired of carrying your shield, if you're fed up with your own bull stuff, if your wife and your kids are sick of mm -hmm. your own bull stuff um, and how you're showing up, get your butt on a weekend. Stop playing games. Your world needs your strength. Your world needs you to be healed. Um, your world needs you restored. Your world needs you to be authentically masculine. Wow. Go after that. Go get it. Stop letting the wounds of your life drive you and hear the words of God saying, you are my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Let those words be the thing that drives the rest of your life Amen. and not your wounds. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, so there's a, a final piece here for re-engaging with the work. Uh, you know, for, for men, Why are you touching I, my I, this, gym? this is where I, you know, <laughs> if like you go to a gym and you see someone who's only good at bench press, like you're really good at this bench press to re-engage with the work. Um, yeah, <laughs> what well, don't, don't waste the strength. Um, yeah. So, so for, for men maybe who are, are hearing this or might even be men who know other men who've, who've gone to the crucible and maybe aren't engaged anymore. And if a man hasn't gone to the weekend, he could tell this to a man that has, and that's not listening to the Crucible podcast. What uh, what could you say to that? So to those that haven't staffed a weekend, whether in the Colorado community or elsewhere, and you've gone through a weekend, fulfill that commitment you made to staff and staff a weekend. For those of you in the Colorado community who we haven't seen since 2018, we miss you. There's a big part of our community that you were engaged and then COVID happened and life happened and death happened and marriage happened and divorce happened and a whole lot has happened and we've not seen you back on a weekend or engaged in any way for many reasons and many of them good reasons. But also I hear, I, I heard from another man the other day says, I've, I've taken several steps backwards since my initial weekend and I've got to go get some things mm -hmm. right before I can show up again. And I'm like, brother, you're missing mm -hmm. the point. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely missing the point. You need grace right now. Come back and find that. If you think you've got to be perfect to come staff and show up on a weekend, you're selling yourself short. You're selling this work short. You're selling your community of men short. Like you are missed. Like there are men that I haven't seen in years that I'm like, I wonder what's happened. I wonder where they're at. And so I just say, you know, get back in the arena. Let's get messy. Come get some truth yeah. and come get some grace. Yeah. Thank you for that. And I appreciate your heart in, in uh, putting in again the work and the effort and, and trading 
other things you could be doing in your life to pursue those men's hearts to bring it back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jay, you asked me for those that haven't invited somebody. Hey, we all know somebody in our world who needs yep. transformation. We all know somebody who, like me, hadn't blown up their life, who probably didn't think that they need a weekend. Make the ask. Don't say no for them. Let them say no. And then be bold and ask again. Our world needs this work of the crucible. So for those that you're afraid, well, I don't want to face rejection if I ask. You know what, man? You know, brother, I've been told no since the day I can remember. Like, like I've been told no since I was two. I'm used to it by now. So as I'm told no now as an adult man, if someone I invite doesn't want to go, guess what? I'm used to the no. But the men that I've invited that have experienced this transformation, oh yeah, let them tell you. It's the hardest no they've avoided. And now that they're on this side of it, they're like, can't get enough of it. I've had I've had men tell me, without knowing it, wow. you saved my marriage. Without knowing it, you saved my life. Wow. I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't know their marriage was in that place. I didn't know their 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 life was on the line. I just saw something in them that thought this man needs some truth and this man needs some grace. And I invited him. And I got brothers mm-hmm. on the journey. So let's do this. Amen. Well, anything else uh, you want to say? Final thoughts, final things coming up as we wrap up our time here? Uh, I think I've said more than enough. Um, thank you, Jay. This has been uh, hard and fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm just grateful for you. I'm grateful for the Crucible Project. Um, I'm grateful that uh, I'm a man who's gone from thinking that God hated him to a man who now knows that he is God's beloved son. Thankful for you. Uh, It's an honor uh, to share your story, to hear the power, to bear witness, to reflect back. You are a beloved son. For more information about our weekends, please go to thecrucibleproject.org. Or if you're ready to get started on your transformational journey right now, you can connect with one of our Crucible certified coaches for a free 30-minute session at thecrucibleproject.org backslash coaching. That's thecrucibleproject.org backslash coaching. If you like what you heard, connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Rate and review wherever you are listening. And don't forget to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform. Thank you for listening.